Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem SCF 03. In this one, I'm gonna really put you to the test based on a given set of information. Can you prepare an indirect method statement of cash flows? Let's take a look. Below is information for Blue Devil Inc. for the year end of December 31, 2019. Prepare the indirect method statement of cash flows. There's a lot of information here. Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can do it on your own. When you're ready, come on back and I'll walk you through it. All right, welcome back. So here we go. Statement of cash flows, like every other financial statement, is going to start off with a header where you put the company name, in this case, Blue Devil Inc., and you put the name of the financial statement. I'm just going to write SCF for simplicity, statement of cash flows. And you also typically put the period of time covered. So over here where we'll put the financials, year ended 12, 31, 19. All right, so we've got our header info. Now, your, your statement of cash flows is divided into three sections plus kind of a bottom tally. Your three sections in order are CFO, cash from operations, CFI, cash from investing, CFF, cash from financing, and then you're going to tally some stuff at the bottom. So first up is going to be our CFO section. So I'm just going to write CFO for simplicity, but it, technically it should say cash flows from operating activities, right? It'll be a little bit more formal than that. Within this, in the indirect method, you always begin with net income. And so looking at my given information, I see that I have net income right here for $135,000. So I'm going to write that. And I'm going to go ahead and scratch it out because we've used it. Now, I could keep going and trying to hunt information along the way. But what I'm going to do for, for now, since I have everything kind of, here's the standard stuff you're going to see. Um, I'm going to pause and I'm going to say, let's go through the given information. And let's see, is there anything that we can just throw away and not use? Or if we are going to use it, where are we going to put it? That way we just kind of have it all organized and ready to go. And so starting at the top, sales revenue. So sales revenue is part of operations. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to put an O next to it for operations. Now we'll see whether we actually use it because notice it says sales revenue. It doesn't actually mention cash. And so we're going to have to kind of keep that in mind as we go. It says decrease in accounts receivable. Well, that's dealing with collections from customers, so that's operations. Cash dividends paid to shareholders, that's a financing activity. Gain on sale of equipment. Now, selling equipment is an investing activity. However, any gains or losses on that, those are going to be adjustments that we need to deal with in operations. So I'm going to put an O next to that. Increase in accounts payable, dealing with suppliers, that's operations. Interest revenue. Now, interest is typically on your debt, so that would normally be considered, say, a financing thing. But because interest results in revenues and expenses, this one specifically revenue, that's an exception to the rule that is going to show up with operations. Repayment of principal on a note, that's part of our financing activities. Purchase of stock of another company, that's an investing activity. The proceeds from the sale of the equipment, that's the investing activity. Cash ending balance, that's one of those things that's going to show up at the bottom. And decrease in unearned revenue. So let's think about that. If, if unearned revenue is going down, that suggests we fulfilled an obligation and therefore we've earned some revenue. So that sounds like that's going to have something to do with operations. So there we go. We've kind of labeled everything. And, and we didn't scratch anything out, but I did mention that there may be some asterisks here to deal with. And so let's go ahead and start working through things. Um, first of all, CFO. Begin with net income. So we're going to go down and we're just going to pay attention to our O's, our operating items, and ask ourselves, what do we do with that? The first piece of information, sales revenue. Now, this was the one that I already said right out the gate. It seemed a little iffy. And at this point, I'm going to say, maybe we just scratch this out. Because if you think about sales revenue, all that is is the revenue that's already factored into your net income, right? Net income starts with your sales revenue, then subtracts out all of your expenses and takes out taxes, and eventually you wind up at net income. So sales revenue is already baked into this number. And so what we don't know is, well, did we collect all that in cash or did we put some of it on account? But guess what? We're about to deal with accounts receivable, and that's going to tackle that for us, which means we don't actually need to deal with this sales revenue. We can go ahead and scratch that out. Now, let's deal with it in the sense of what I just mentioned. How much of that was collected on account 
versus how much of it was actual cash. And you'll notice what it says here is over, overall, year over year, we had a decrease in receivables. Now, the only way receivables go down year over year is if we collected all of our sales revenue in cash and we collected even more than that, which ate into the receivables that already existed. So what this is telling us is that we collected cash from customers of 18,000 that was not revenue in the current period. Or if I think about this from a journal entry perspective, um, this is a, a debit cash credit AR. Now that situation right there involves a cash inflow related to operations that is not already captured by our net income. Therefore, we are going to have to add that to our CFO section, 18,000 inflow. Why? Because we had a decrease in AR. And so we're done with that. I'm going to scratch it out. Um, next operating thing that we have on here, this gain on sale of equipment. A gain on sale implies that net income went up by 13,000 because we profited on the sale. However, a sale of equipment is an investing activity, so this does not belong in our CFO section. It is in this number. We need to back it out of there. And so we are going to reduce our net income by $13,000 for that gain on sale of equipment. By the way, I'm going to take a moment here and just do one thing for formality. Typically, instead of just listing those directly under net income, you do go ahead and put a little note in here that these are the adjustments. And it's usually some formal line. Adjustments to reconcile net income to cash from operations, right? Some long-winded word like that. For simplicity here, I'm just going to write adjustments, okay? Um, so we're done with gain on sale of equipment. So let's move to our next O, increase in accounts payable. Well, if accounts payable went up, that means we owe more to suppliers now than we did before. That implies that we must have bought something or incurred some cost that a supplier gave us, and we did not pay the cash for that item. So in other words, net income was lowered by whatever this supplier did for us, and we haven't actually had a cash outflow yet. Therefore, we need to reverse that activity. We need to add that back to net income because we didn't actually pay that money yet, even though the cost was incurred. And so that's 10,000 added back, increase in accounts payable. All right, next up, interest revenue received. All right, so in this case, we got paid interest revenue so we received cash, debit cash. We recorded revenue, credit revenue. Well, that revenue is in this net income number. And interest is considered operating. And we got the cash, so it belongs in CFO. There's nothing to be done with this one because it's already in there. And so we can simply ignore it. Our next O, actually our last O, decrease in unearned revenue of $8,000. When unearned revenue goes down, it implies that revenue was earned. So that means net income was increased by this activity. However, when you fulfill the obligation on an unearned, it's because you already got paid. You got paid sometime in the past. There was no cash flow associated with this. So it's in net income as an increase of 8,000. There was no CFO. So we need to adjust by taking that out of net income, minus 8,000, due to a decrease in, I'm just going to put U slash R, unearned revenue. And I'm going to go ahead and scratch that one out as well. We're done with all our O's. So the last thing to do here is to tally up our CFO section. And so I'm going to get my calculator out. And we've got $135,000 plus $18,000 minus, whoop, nope, that's supposed to be minus $13,000 uh, plus 10 and minus eight. And that is gonna put us with net CFO of $142,000. Once we're done our CFO section, we've gotta move on to our CFI section. 
And so we're going to see, um, we have what, two CFI items? I think we can squeeze that in on this slide, and then we'll do the rest on the next slide. So we're going to have our header for CFI. We need to put our activity that happened regarding CFI in here. The first thing is we bought stock in another company for $15,000. So we could say purchase of stock, or we could say purchase of equity investment, right? Describe these any way you want. Remember, if we're the ones making the purchase, that's a cash outflow of $15,000 because we're spending money. So that takes care of that I. The next thing up, cash proceeds from the sale of equipment. So proceeds from sale of equip. If we are selling something, we're the ones receiving the money. So that's positive 25. That's cash inflow. Those are the only two I's we had on here. So we will now tally those up. And that is going to be a $10,000 net inflow from CFI. All right. We have to move on to our CFF and then finally our bottom section here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy our notations right here. And I'm going to bring them over with us to a fresh slide. Paste those in. Do, do, do. There we go. All right. So to begin our CFF section, um, we have how many items for CFF in here? It looks like two. The cash dividends paid to shareholders. So these are dividends paid. Remember, if we are paying out, that's cash outflow 5000 Scratch that. We also have repayment of principal on a note, 50000 So again, we are paying off principal. So we could say debt extinguishment or debt repayment, something of that nature. And so that's an outflow of fifty. And that was all of our financing activities that we identified. So now we'll tally that up. And that is going to be a net outflow of 55000 net CFF. The next thing we want to do is tally up all of our subtotals. And that's going to give us our net change in cash. So if we get our calculator out, we have the negative 55. And then we have whoop, moved the calculator too prematurely there. We have the um, 10,000 from the CFI, and then we have the 142,000 from the CFO. So that is going to give us a net change in cash of 97,000 dollars. Typically, then you list the beginning cash balance, and then you add these two together to give you your ending cash balance, and that is going to be the end of your statement of cash flows. However, notice that this problem did not give us the beginning cash balance. Instead, it gave us the ending cash balance, but that's not problematic in this problem. We just have to recognize that, okay, if it gave us 140000 ending cash, then all that means is that we know the bottom number, and whoop, trying to get my pen back here, and my pen's not working. Um, we know the bottom number, 140000 and so now we simply take the difference between 140 and 97, and that works out to 43,000, which means that our beginning cash must have been 43,000. We're simply plugging that number in, in order that 97,000 and 43,000 equals 140,000. And we are officially at the end of our statement of cash flows. All right, that one was a doozy because there was a lot going on there, and especially in that operating section. So if you had any trouble following what I was doing in that operating section, go do the journal entries. Take all of those O's and ask yourself, what does the journal entry look like that represents this activity? Then ask yourself, did that activity affect net income, in which case it's already in the starting number of the section, and did that activity affect CFO? And so depending on the answer to that question, that's then going to tell you, can I just ignore this because it was already in net income and it should be in CFO? Or can I ignore it because it wasn't in net income and shouldn't be in CFO? Or do I need to back it out of net income because it was in net income but it shouldn't be in CFO? Or do I simply need to add this into my CFO section because it's not net income but it should be in CFO? 
and I know that was a lot to follow there, um, but if you've watched my other videos on this, you know that I provide a, a rubric that kind of explains all of these things, and it's a nice little kind of cheat sheet to follow when you do these types of problems. So with that said, um, I do hope that you found doing this practice problem helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.